Mano, we need more succulents. There's a bay, perfect. It's back in there, I reckon. Oh. oh, well, lucky I've got side mirrors. The problem is, I don't really know how far back I need to go. Gonna have to guess about there, I reckon. This is what parking's like with no reversing camera and a giant metal box on the back. It's certainly not fun. And to be honest, it's not really safe either because I've got no way of knowing if something or someone has crossed the path behind the car. For that reason, I'm happy to report that that will be the last blind park I ever do. As soon as I get home from the shops, I'm gonna be installing my brand new reversing camera. What's up guys? I've been looking forward to getting back in the garage again today to work on what's hopefully going to be a pretty easy install. And that's putting in a brand new reversing camera in the Ranger, which is something that's long, long overdue. I think it was around a year ago that I reviewed my cheap eBay special wireless reversing camera. I remember saying how terrible it was and then literally two weeks later, it just completely died. So what's it like for $30? Honestly, it's absolutely rubbish for three main reasons. So I've been without a camera ever since because I couldn't really make up my mind on what I wanted to replace it with. A lot of you guys recommended Safety Dave cameras, which looked awesome, and I was pretty close to pulling the trigger on one of those. But then a good mate of mine picked up a Pioneer RCA Mavic and absolutely loved it. So I decided to buy the same, and here it is, my brand new reversing camera. Now, this should be a pretty easy install. The box came with pretty much everything you need. I have also bought a bit of a single core wire to run the reverse light feed, which we'll cover shortly. But the first thing to do is rip off this old reversing camera. I gotta admit, that was uh, pretty satisfying pulling off the old camera. So the next step is gonna be to work out where I wanna mount my new camera. And before I do, check out how tiny that little camera is. Look at that, tiny. I am slightly concerned about the strength of these uh, little pivoting brackets on the side there. They do look tiny and they're some of the smallest screws I've ever seen. So hopefully, it's, uh, hopefully it stands the test of time, but we'll see. So my two options for mounting, the first is tucked up here above the number plate, pretty much the same as where the last one was mounted. It does look pretty neat mounted in there, I'm not going to lie, and it's also nice and protected by the edge of the tray, which is great. Also when I disconnect my canopy or lift the canopy off, the camera's still going to work because it's mounted on the tray and not the canopy itself. And there's also one less plug to disconnect. But there is a second mounting option. That of course is up on top of the canopy here, looking pretty much straight down. Now that is a popular mounting spot for a lot of people with canopies, because it does give you a really nice bird's eye view, kind of top down view of your situation. But in my opinion, it does make the camera a fair bit more vulnerable. Still a tough decision though, hmm. You know what, just to keep it protected and out of the elements a bit, I am gonna mount it down low on the number plate, just like I had my old one mounted. If I find the angle annoying, I can just move it later, but at the end of the day, they're designed to be mounted quite low, so I think it should be fine. There we go, all mounted. I reckon that looks pretty neat. The next step is gonna to be to run the wiring between the camera and the head unit. 
And to do that, we're gonna use the included wiring kit, which has an RCA connector on one end for plugging into the back of the stereo in the car, and a camera connector on the other end for plugging the camera into. Because that camera plug is pretty nice and small, I'm probably gonna start this wiring kit at the front and then chase it back to the camera. I'm also gonna run a power wire as well and run that alongside this camera feed to tap into my reverse light wiring. That way my head unit's gonna know when I select reverse and turn on the camera feed. Now you can also tap into your reverse signal wire inside the cab if that's easier for you. I've already tapped into these reverse lights for my previous camera, so running a thin wire is gonna be the easiest option for me. I'm also gonna run those wires inside a length of conduit for a bit of protection against the elements. Firstly, I'm feeding the wiring through to the back of the head unit. Next up, I'm tapping the earth of the reverse camera wiring into the earth of the head unit. After plugging the camera into the camera input, I'm splicing the positive feed from the camera wiring into the reverse light signal wire of my head unit, so it knows when to display the camera feed. After pulling the wiring through the firewall and adding some conduit for protection, I need to find a safe path for the wiring to follow to get to the back of the car. At the tail end, I'm tapping the brand new power wire that I ran alongside the camera feed into the existing positive feed of my reversing lights. And just like that, my brand new reversing camera is fully installed and I'm very keen to fire it up and see how it looks. All in all, it was a pretty straightforward job. Probably the most time consuming part for me was chasing the wires through the firewall, out the bottom of the car and then finding a path for them to follow that they weren't gonna get caught up on sticks. Well, if I've done my wiring correctly, fingers crossed, if I now turn the keys on and select reverse, my camera feed should be displayed. And sure enough, there it is, woohoo, new reversing camera. Hey, that looks really good actually. I'm very pleased with that quality. Like the, uh, the resolution of the camera seems to be a fair bit better than my previous one. And that field of view is so nice and wide too, which is just fantastic. I might need to tilt the camera down a little bit, I think. It seems to be a little bit, uh, a little bit high, but that's an easy adjustment. Oh, fantastic. And it seems to fire up really quickly too when I select reverse. Slightly neutral now, reverse. Probably like less than two seconds, which is exactly what you want when you're getting ready to reverse into a bay. Anyway, that's how you install a reversing camera in your car. And that's gonna make reversing a whole lot easier and a whole lot safer for me. If you've got a Ranger similar to this one and you're wanting to upgrade your factory stereo, I'll leave a link to a video here where I run through the whole process. Or for something a bit different, check out this video instead. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.